Today I'm going to be making a very simple homemade pizza sauce that anybody can make at home. So let's get on with the ingredients. One can of tomato sauce and this here is 680 milliliters. That is 23 ounces. Six teaspoons of sugar. I have four teaspoons of parsley. Two teaspoons of regular salt. A half a teaspoon of black pepper. Two teaspoons of pizza seasoning. If you don't have pizza seasoning, you can use oregano, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of celery salt. And our last ingredient is a little bit of cinnamon, and I have an eighth of a teaspoon here. And that's the little secret ingredient in this recipe. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. All right, our first step, I'm gonna get all of the nice tomato sauce right into my bowl here. I am using Hunt's. You can use any brand that you like. And this is a 23 ounce tin, 680 milliliters. There we go. I'm gonna take my sugar now. We'll get our sugar in there. Our nice parsley. There we go. Our black pepper. Our pizza seasoning. And our salt. And our last little ingredient, our cinnamon. There we go. And then we're just going to grab a whisk and we'll just whisk all of this together. Pizza sauce is a very simple thing. A lot of people think that it's, you know, they have magical ingredients in there. But there's really, really nothing magical about it. By the way, if you want to use your brand of tomatoes that you like, you can put them into a food processor, break them down and use that instead of buying sauce that's already made. You can see how nice and deep in color you know this is, very, very nice. Now what I do is I like to let this sit for a couple of hours before I use it. You can see that it's, it's not very, very thick. In the pizza place where I have worked, we don't boil this down, but there are some people who will actually put it, you know, on the stove and just boil it down a little bit, you know, just to thicken it up a little bit. But right there, that's beautiful, just like that. I never boil mine, you know, to reduce it, but you can if you wish. If you want to, you know, reduce it, just bring it down a little bit, you can. But there we go. But what you really want to do is you want to let this sit for a couple of hours. Overnight is even better. And what will happen is all of the flavors in there will really, really come together. So there we go. Homemade, authentic pizza sauce. Very, very simple recipe. Very quick to make. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time. So let's get on with the ingredients. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, that's 390 grams. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil, that is 30 milliliters. One cup of warm water, and that is 250 grams or 250 milliliters. I actually weighed the water out as well today. Two teaspoons of granulated white sugar, that is 10 milliliters. And our last ingredient, one teaspoon or five milliliters of quick rising yeast. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. Today I'm going to be using my KitchenAid mixer to make this super, super simple. I've got my KitchenAid bowl. I'm going to take my water and get that right into the bowl. My water is at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. To that, all of my all-purpose flour. In some countries, that is called plain flour. I'll get in all of my oil, and then all of our yeast. I'm also gonna add in all of my sugar, 
Perfect. So then we're going to start getting this all mixed up on our KitchenAid mixer. And there is one other ingredient, you can add it or not, and it's a little bit of salt, and I'll add that in once we start getting all of this combined. Some people like the salt, some people don't. I'll get that up there. And, I'm gonna, and now I'll start mixing this together and I'll come back in about two minutes. So this is about two minutes later and my dough is really coming together. I'm going to take a half a teaspoon of salt, that's 2.5 ml, and I'm going to dump that in there now. Get that right in there. So at this point, I'm going to leave the mixer going for about five minutes. I want to really, really start working those glutens. I want to get all the protein in there really worked up. I want to get a really nice elastic dough. So I'm going to let this go for about five minutes and then I'll come back. Okay, so our five minutes is now up and my dough looks beautiful. remove it from our bowl. Now I've got a bowl here. I'm just going to spray this with a little bit of vegetable cooking spray. So I've sprayed this now. If you don't have cooking spray you can take a little bit of oil and just put it in there and just rub it around with a little piece of paper or with a little silicone brush. Grab my beautiful dough. I'm just going to bring this out to show you what it looks like. Look at that, really nice dough. Look at how nice this dough is. Hopefully the camera can pick up how supple this dough is. A beautiful, beautiful dough. So I'm just gonna get it into a little bit of a ball here. So I'm turning the dough ball and I'm taking my hand and I'm going like this, just gently. So it's forming that ball as I'm going around. So you're just going, you're hitting it gently. Okay, grab your bowl, pop that in there. I'll grab my cooking spray one more time and I'm just gonna spray a little bit on the top. So what that oil does on the top, it keeps the dough really, really moist and it allows it to expand. And now I'm gonna get a little piece of plastic wrap over our dough and I'm gonna let this rest for probably a good hour. The dough will slowly expand and it's going to get really, really nice and that's what we want. So I'll let that go and I'll be back in a little while. So this is about one hour later and here is our beautiful pizza dough. And this is ready now to be used. So I've got my pizza tray ready to go and it is 16 inches in diameter. I'm just going to grab a little bit of vegetable oil and just get that down. That's an optional step. I like to put a little bit of oil down just to get a little bit of crispy going on underneath the actual dough. Here's our nice dough. I'll move this off to the side a little bit. So I want to show you this. Look at this. Can you hear that? Look as my hands are touching that dough, how beautiful that is. I'm just going to lift that right up. I really want to keep that circle and I'm going to get that right on there. And look at this as I press it. I'm going to get back in the middle here and just show you. I wish you could touch the dough with me. This is so nice. Now at this point if you have a tiny rolling pin you could get in there and roll it. But it's fun to do it with your hands. And then just get your hands in there. And start slowly getting a larger circle and make the dough any thickness that you like. So I'm going to keep working on this and I'll come back in a little while. So once you have pushed this out to the size that you want and you want to get your sauce on next and I'm using some homemade pizza sauce and I will put a link to that in the description box in case you're wondering how I made this. And then I'm going to get on some nice mozzarella cheese so I've got my favorite little grater here, little IKEA grater that comes with a little base. 
So you can store your cheese in, so you can actually grate it right into the actual container, which is nice. So I'll keep going at this, and I'll be back. Okay, and that's perfect for the cheese. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of pepperoni on. So a little bit of pepperoni, never hurts. And get some of that on here. And that looks pretty good. And I do have my oven set to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna pop this into my oven until it's nice and golden brown, around nine minutes or so. And here we go, right out of the oven. I let that go for 10 minutes exactly at that 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Looks really, really good. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna slice this up and enjoy it with friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time. monkey dough pizza in a cast iron skillet. So let's get started. So here is my dough. I made this dough yesterday so it has had a slow ferment in my fridge which really helps develop the flavors. I'm just gonna push it down you can see how nice this dough is. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm also gonna zoom in just a little bit so you're a little closer up. So the first thing we're gonna do I just want to weigh out my dough so that we know exactly what we're working with here. I'm gonna grab this little piece of dough, pop it on there. 332 grams, or 11.7 ounces, so basically 12 ounces. So that's good. I'm gonna take my dough, and I'm gonna split it into 16 balls. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and there's 16. So now we have 16 pieces, on to our next step. I'm gonna get my little bowl here, a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. I'm gonna take all of my little pieces, get those right in. A little bit more olive oil. I'm just going to give these a fast toss. And at this point, I've got my oven already preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Just want to have everything ready because this is a very fast recipe. That's good. To this, I'm just going to add in some homemade pizza sauce. If you want to see how this is made, I do have a link below this video in the description box. And you can watch that video if you wish. And I'm just going to get all of this stirred around. That's good. And then we're going to add some cheese into here. So we're just going to get a little bit of mozzarella in here. And I'm not going to measure this, I'm just going to do this by eye. So super, super simple. And you can add anything else that you wish. You can add in some green pepper or pepperoni, whatever you like. Maybe some nice sautéed mushrooms in olive oil, that would be really good too. And also sautéed onion, mmm, yum. So there we have that. We're going to be adding cheese to the top as well, so this is perfect. 
Just mix it around nicely. That's good. On to our next step. What I have here is a nine inch in diameter cast iron skillet. And right now it is cold. I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. That's gonna give a nice little texture to our pizza. Once we get it in the oven, just get all of that around. That's good. And then we're just gonna simply add in all of our little pizza dough balls. Just get all of that around. So what people are going to do is once this comes out of the oven, you're going to want to grab little pieces and tear them off. So you want to position them so that it's easy for you to do that. So just get them all nicely positioned in your pan. And I think that looks good. And now we're just going to add a little bit of cheese to the top. And a little bit more cheese on the top. And you can put as little or as much as you want. No rules. I like a lot of cheese. See, I'm not measuring. I'm just doing it by eye. I think this is going to be good. And we'll just get this nice and even on the top. That looks good. Just before I put this in the oven, I wanted to say that I like to bake this at 400 so that it doesn't really bake too fast. The dough is rather thick. It's not like a thin crust pizza, so it does take a little bit longer in the oven to bake properly. So I find 400 degrees Fahrenheit is a really good temperature to use. I'll just tilt this up so you can see what it looks like before we pop it in. I do see a little piece of cheese there. And there we have it. So, into my oven, and I will be back in a little while. Just before it comes out, let's take a little look. Oh, that looks awesome. All right, I will be back in a few minutes when we bring it out. Yum. So here we go, just out of the oven. 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I baked it for a total of 30 minutes and you can see that bubbling action going on This is extremely hot at this moment. So I'm gonna have to let this cool down before we dig into it So this is about 10 minutes later, and this has cooled down quite a bit So I'm gonna get right in there and get ourselves a little piece I'll Just show you how nice this is get right underneath and look at this Oh, now yeah, let's go for another one. You can see how nicely this just tears apart. And there we have it. Well, let me zoom in on this. So now that I've zoomed in, hopefully you can see how nice this pizza is. Look at the dough. Super, super moist and perfectly baked inside. I'm just going to grab a little fork and just pull this apart. Of course, I'm going to have to try a little piece. Mm. That is really, really good. I hope you try this very simple recipe out at home. Mmm. That's really good. If you have children, you're gonna definitely wanna try this recipe. And what's so easy about it is that if you've been on my channel for a while, you've seen me make pizza dough, you can use any of my pizza recipes to create this really, really easy dish. So that's it for today's really fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. That's it, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, if you're on Facebook, check me out, facebook.com slash bakelikeapro.
Today we're going to make some really easy and moist lemon cupcakes. So let's get on with the ingredients. One cup of cake flour, a quarter cup of lemon juice, a quarter cup of canola oil, a quarter cup of sour cream, one teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, one egg, and our last ingredient, the zest of one lemon. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. Into a large bowl, I have placed my egg. To that, I'm gonna add in the oil, and then all of my granulated sugar. I'm gonna grab my hand mixer, and I'm gonna start mixing all of this together. So you just want to mix this until it's really well combined. You can see after just a few seconds how the mixture is all coming together. So at this point you can whip this as much as you want, get a lot of air incorporated into the batter. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to add in our sour cream. And this is going to add some acidity and also make our cupcakes more moist. Get all of that in there. That's good. Grab my mixer one more time. I just want to mix that in a little bit. You can see that's just really, really loosening up the mixture. I can even go a little faster if I want. That's good. And then, I'm going to get in our nice lemon juice. And then, and just to make this really, really fast, I'll grab our flour, our baking powder, and our little bit of salt. We'll just sift all of that in. Perfect. And I do have my oven going right now at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to grab my mixer and just start slowly getting all of this in. And I am on speed number one. I do not want to overwork this batter too much. But you can see, it looks like a lot of ingredients, but it goes pretty quickly. Let's get all of that in there. And if you don't have an electric mixer, you can use a spatula to mix all of this together, or a whisk. That looks good. And just as a last optional step, I am going to grate some of my lemon into here. And that's just going to pump up the flavor. Oh, that smells amazing. And you don't have to use the whole lemon. And this does smell really good. Oh, that's pretty good. I've used about three quarters of my lemon. Grab our mixer one last time. Speed number one. I'm just going to slowly get all of that incorporated. And that's good, just like that. Clean off your beaters. And now we are ready to fill our tins. Whenever you're doing cupcakes or muffins in the oven, make sure you always have a little pan underneath to catch any drippings in case it does go over. So I am using paper liners. Now I'm just going to start filling these up. You can see how nice this batter is. It's really fluffy. I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. And then just use the rest of your batter and just 
even all of your liners up so that they all look about the same. And make sure, always use a spatula, which I'm going to do now just to clean out my bowl to make sure I get all of my ingredients out. A spatula is one of these things that is inexpensive, but it really is one of your best friends in the kitchen. Well, I wish you could smell how nice this is. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to bake these about 25 minutes. Oh, that batter's amazing. Mm. So I'm going to pop these into my oven, and I'll be back later. So here we go. Exactly 25 minutes in my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. I wish you could be here. These smell amazing. I can really, really get that lemon aroma coming right up at me. Really, really nice. Now these are extremely hot, but I will pull them out and I'm gonna let them completely cool and then I'm gonna come back and show you what they look like inside. We'll break one open. Ooh, hot. I'll get these out. There we go. Remove this. Oh, these are really nice. So at this point, I'm going to let them completely cool, and then I'll come back a little later. So this is about an hour later. My cupcakes have completely cooled, and now I'm just going to break into one to show you what they look like inside. So I'm just going to open this up. Now, I bake mine for 25 minutes. If you want them a little bit more done or brown, a little bit more on the top, you can do them for another five minutes or so, so for a total of 30 minutes. I did mine for 25. I'll just show you what these look like inside though. Look at this. You can see all the nice specks of lemon in there. And look at this, super, super moist. Look at this. Oh, of course I'm gonna have to try a little piece. Mmm, that's really, really good. And if you love lemon, you're gonna love these cupcakes. So that's it for this really fast video. I hope you enjoyed it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to whip up a batch of vanilla buttercream icing. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow food coloring to it. And then I will just decorate one of these for, for my thumbnail and also for the intro of my video. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wish. I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com slash bake like a pro. And also you'll see some close up pictures of these cupcakes on my Pinterest page, which is pinterest.com slash bake like a pro. That's it for today and I'll see you next time. I have to go in for a little more bite. Mm. I love lemon. Very good. So I've just loaded up a little bit of vanilla buttercream and I've added some yellow food coloring to it. And I'm just gonna pipe a little simple design on here. Start off in the middle and all the way around. There we go, that looks nice. I'll do another one. And one more. Yeah. Perfect. So if you're still watching, this really isn't the end of the video. I did want to ice these on camera. Now I'm just going to zoom in for the real last part of our video. So I've just zoomed in just to show you these a little closer up. So that really is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. One and a half cups of cake and pastry flour. One and a half cups of granulated sugar. A half a cup 
of cocoa powder, and I am using Dutch processed cocoa powder in this recipe, a half a cup of vegetable oil, two eggs, a half a cup of milk, two teaspoons of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and our last ingredient, one teaspoon of vanilla. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. For our first step, we're going to get our eggs into our bowl. I'm going to grab my mixer. I'll break up my eggs. And then I'll start adding in all of my granulated sugar. You can see that really nice creamy mixture already starting to happen here. And then all of my vegetable oil right in as well. The vanilla. That's good. And then I'll get the milk in. And that's going to make this really, really loose. And now we will add in our dry ingredients. So we've got our flour, our baking soda, baking powder, our salt, and our cocoa powder. And we'll get all of that in there. And then I'll grab the back of a spoon and just push all those little pieces right through. And there we have it. We'll grab our mixer again. Speed number one. You do not want to have a dust cloud. Cocoa powder goes everywhere. So be very, very careful. And we'll just start mixing this in. And then our last ingredient, our coffee. Slowly pour that in. And that's it for the recipe. And we're just going to mix all of this together. Make sure you get right down to the bottom of your bowl. Make sure everything is incorporated. So move your mixer around really well. If you're doing that with a whisk, you can do the same thing. Get into all the corners. So this should take you about a minute or so. No more than that is needed. And I do have my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that looks good. And now we're going to go get our pan. What I have here is a 9 inch in diameter baking tin and I've lined it with a little piece of parchment paper and this is just going to make it really easy to get our cake out. And I'll just grab my bowl and start filling this. Make sure you use a spatula so that you get everything out of your bowl. And that's perfect. So what I'm going to do is transfer this to a pizza tray and now I'm going to pop my cake into my oven for about 40 minutes. My cake has been resting for about 15 minutes. It's getting cool and as it cooled it actually sank. When I brought it out it had a nice dome to it but you can see that there's a little bit of sinking going on and the reason for that I should have left this in the oven for another five minutes so that it really stabilized inside. I thought the cake was completely done at the 40 minute mark and it wasn't. You can see around the edges that the cake is actually pulled away from the cake tin which is a good indication that the cake is ready to go that you can bring it out of the oven that it's completely baked and that's what I did but you can still see that I had a problem with it. So maybe it's a good thing that this did happen, just so that you could see that this happens to everyone. So that extra five minutes would have solidified all of those ingredients inside. What happened is when it started to cool and the hot air that was inside, it cooled, it just collapsed. However, this will still be a good cake. And at this point now, we're just going to grab a little spatula. And I'll just go around. I just want to release it from the sides so that we get a nice break. And you remember that little piece of parchment paper we put at the bottom, well that's going to help us get this cake out. 
So to get it out, I'm going to put this on top and then we're going to flip it. And then I'm going to grab both of these together and I'm going to flip it over. And that's quite hot. But I do want to get it off before a lot of moisture starts really building up inside. And there we have it and I'll just show you the bottom. Pretty clean. And then we can just grab and pull. You can see how dark this cake is. This is a really, really good cake. And then grab the other one. Firmly hold it and then flip it over once more. And there we have it. Because I'm using this cake in another video, I'm not going to cut into this cake in this video. But I will provide a link underneath this video in the description box. It'll be a clickable link. You can click that and it'll take you directly to the next video where I'm going to be using this cake. So just to end up the video, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that we can take a nice look. So I'm just going to give this a little spin. I've just zoomed in. Hopefully you can see how nice this cake is. I'll just lift it up a little bit. And what I thought I would do is once I do the other video and I've cut into this, I'm going to add on a little section of video of me cutting into it and I'll add it on to the end of this video. So after this portion here, so that you can actually see what this cake looks like inside. So at this point, I'm going to end off the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the next video where I use this cake. A clickable link will be down in the description box. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Before I continue, I'm just going to bring over the middle section of the cake that we cut because in the previous video I did promise that I would come back and show how nice this cake is inside even though we had a little bit of depression in the middle. So I'm just going to zoom in so that we can look at this cake really close up. So I've just zoomed in to show you how nice this cake is inside. I'll just give it a little squish and you can see how moist this cake is and very, very dark. A really, really nice cake. I'll just slice into it a little bit here. And look at that. Amazing. Of course, I'm going to have to try a little piece. Mm. Oh, wow. In today's recipe, we're going to make a very easy vanilla sponge cake. This cake is going to be a little bit smaller. I am going to be using a 6 inch springform pan. So it's about half the size of the two sponge cake recipes that I do have on my YouTube channel at this moment. Into my KitchenAid bowl, I'm going to put in three eggs. I'm going to get my whisk attachment on. And I just want to whip this up a little bit to break up the eggs. Once all of my eggs are broken up, I'm going to get all of my sugar into there. And that is a half a cup of granulated sugar. And then I'll add in my salt. This is just a little bit, an eighth of a teaspoon. And now I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Then I'm going to get my mixer going again. And now I want to let this go for a good five minutes. I want to really get all of those eggs really, really fluffed up. So I'm going to get my mixer going on high speed and I'm going to let this go for a good five minutes and then I'll come back. So here we are a full five minutes later. I'm going to remove my whisk. 
and my bowl. I'll move my mixer out of the way. And I just want to show you how nice this is. Look at how pale, and you see the ribbons? Look at this. This is perfect, just like that. And we want to work quickly at this point. So I'm going to bring in my half a cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to sprinkle that in there. And I do want to sift this because I want to make sure that it's nice and fine and that we don't have any little bits. And that's perfect. And that did a really good job. And then I'm going to grab my spatula and I just want to fold this in. So you don't want to start mixing this too much. You just want to gently fold it all in. And I do have my oven going at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure that your oven is going and preheated before you start all of this process. So hopefully the camera can pick that up. You just want to get all of that mixed. Just fold it in. And I'm using a six inch springform pan, which I have lined with parchment paper. And in some countries that's called baking paper. Just want to make sure that most of this is incorporated and that looks good. So I have my springform pan with a little piece of parchment paper on the bottom and this is six inches in diameter. And now we'll just get all of this right into our springform pan. Good. A little bit extra. And I'll just even it out a little bit. You can see how fluffy that is. And now right into my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. And when I do come back, I'll tell you exactly how long I baked it. All right, right out of my oven. 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I did this for exactly 40 minutes. At this point this is very very hot. I just want to let it cool down a little bit and then we'll unmold it. So this is about 15 minutes later and at this point I do want to get the outer ring off so I don't get a lot of condensation building up. But I do want to have a nice clean break. So I'm going to go around and just make sure that we get a nice clean break. Look at this. Oh, perfect. And don't worry, later on when this is completely cooled, I am going to take a slice of it and I will zoom in so that we can see this cake a lot closer up. Look at the height we got off of that. And I'm also going to measure this to tell you exactly how high this is so that you know. Look at that. Really, really nice. So at this point, I'm going to let this completely cool down and then I'll come back a little while later. So here we are again. This is about an hour later and my mini vanilla sponge cake has completely cooled. If I put my finger here, you can see how big this is in comparison to my hands. Amazing how much height we got out of those eggs. And remember, we did not use any leavening agent, no baking powder or baking soda. And in this type of sponge cake, all of the magic that you see happening here is because of all of the air that we whipped into those eggs. As you noticed, I used no butter in my recipe today. And this makes this sponge cake super light in texture. So at this point, the only thing left to do is to cut into it and show you what it looks like inside. So let's cut into this. Look at this. Let me turn this around. Look at that. 
That is so nice. Look at how, I wish you could be here. This is so light. Look at this. It almost floats in the air. And that's because we don't have any butter in there. This is super, super light in texture. I wish the uh, camera could pick up like what I'm feeling here. It is so light you wouldn't believe it. Really, really nice and super, super simple. Let me turn this around. And as always, I will zoom in. Now that we're a lot closer up, hopefully you can see the nice texture of our sponge cake and a little shot from the inside as well. A really, really simple recipe. This is an amazing cake, that's all I can say. I really, really hope that you try it out. And before I forget, I will put exact information on the diameter and the height of the springform pan that I was using, and it is made by Wilton. So I will just show you a little closer up how nice this is, the little squeeze test. And you can serve this any which way you like. You could serve this, you could cut it in the middle, you can put whipped cream in there with strawberries, or just a little bit of powdered sugar on the top, some fresh berries on the side, any which way, this is a great cake. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is my easy mini vanilla sponge cake recipe. You can find it here and also on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash bake like a pro. I will also have pictures of my mini sponge cake over on my Pinterest page, which is pinterest.com slash bake like a pro. So that's it for today and I'll see you next time. Today I'm going to be making a very simple homemade pizza sauce that anybody can make at home. So let's get on with the ingredients. One can of tomato sauce and this here is 680 milliliters. That is 23 ounces. Six teaspoons of sugar. I have four teaspoons of parsley. Two teaspoons of regular salt. A half a teaspoon of black pepper. Two teaspoons of pizza seasoning. If you don't have pizza seasoning, you can use oregano, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of celery salt. And our last ingredient is a little bit of cinnamon, and I have an eighth of a teaspoon here. And that's the little secret ingredient in this recipe. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. All right, our first step, I'm gonna get all of the nice tomato sauce right into my bowl here. I am using Hunt's. You can use any brand that you like. And this is a 23 ounce tin, 680 milliliters. There we go. I'm gonna take my sugar now. We'll get our sugar in there. Our nice parsley. There we go. Our black pepper. Our pizza seasoning. And our salt. And our last little ingredient, our cinnamon. There we go. And then we're just gonna grab a whisk and we'll just whisk all of this together. Pizza sauce is a very simple thing. A lot of people think that it's, you know, they have magical ingredients in there, but there's really, really nothing magical about it. By the way, if you want to use your brand of tomatoes that you like, you can put them into a food processor, break them down and use that instead of buying sauce that's already made. You can see how nice and deep in color you know this is, very, very nice. Now what I do is I like to let this sit for a couple of hours before I use it. You can see that it's, it's not very, very thick. In the pizza place where I have worked, we don't boil this down, but there are some people who will actually put it, you know, on the stove and just boil it down a little bit, you know, just to thicken it up a little bit. But right there, that's beautiful, just like that. I never boil mine, you know, to reduce it, but you can if you wish. 
If you want to, you know, reduce it, just bring it down a little bit, you can. But there we go. But what you really want to do is you want to let this sit for a couple of hours. Overnight is even better. And what will happen is all of the flavors in there will really, really come together. So there we go. Homemade, authentic pizza sauce. Very, very simple recipe. Very quick to make. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.